This is the Tuapet Kong Buddhist monastery. It is the oldest monastery in this entire region and was established in the early 1900s by successful Chinese businessmen who immigrated here after petroleum was discovered. So let's take a look. Just a few minutes ago, I arrived at a famous local landmark. It's called Horse Rock. The natural formation is just huge. Now, the tide is up, so I can't really walk over there right now, but I think you get the picture. Borneo is just beautiful, and it will take your breath away. Many people skip this island. But from what I know, Borneo can't be beat. There's just miles and miles and miles of beach with just a few locals. There's stretches that go for miles where you could be all by yourself all day. There's nobody harassing you or haranguing you, trying to sell you stuff. This place is pure bliss. This is my breakfast, chicken congee. It's got shredded chicken, an egg, and it's a porridge. So it looks like a great way to start the day. And of course, always coffee. And this should hold me for a few hours until I get to Fort Hose in the little village of Baram. It's about a two hour ride. And who knows, maybe I'll get some off-roading in done today. So it's time to eat breakfast and get ready for the ride.
Well, I just entered the little river town of Maruti. This is full of the indigenous people of Malaysia. All kinds of tribes represented here. And it's lunchtime, so I want to find a little food. This is what I'm talking about right here. Pull your motorcycle right into the coffee shop. Well, I made it. Let's see what they've got here to serve. Well, a few minutes ago, I just arrived in Maruti and I stopped at this cafe and ordered some coffee with milk. And usually it's a sweet and condensed milk that they put in, so it's okay. It's sweet, strong coffee and some water. And when I walked in here, the waitress said, what brings you here? No one ever comes here. How did you find this place? And I said, well, I like to go to places off the beaten path. She said, oh. And I said, well, um, what kind of food do you have here? And she said, well, I would recommend a special noodle to this area, a traditional food here that people really like and eat. So it's perfect. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, enjoy it. Sit down here just for one minute. Is it long? Just, yeah, just for a minute. Okay. So, what is your name? Ivy. 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 Yes. Ivy, I'm Matthew. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Okay. So, Ivy, tell me about this noodles. Yes, it's a bit thick texture. Yes. Thick texture noodles. Yes. Yeah, it's famous it's in this town. Famous at what's it called? Wei Okay, this is Wei Diao. And uh, it's spicy? No, uh, you can add some spicy or chili. Oh. But, uh, but I, I give you the original one. The original? Yes, oh. this is original. Like your mother makes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I am on the trail of the Belut Lakiput people as an unreached people group. So what are the chances? The waitress, her name was Ivy, she's a university student, she's an engineering student, and uh, she said if you'd come a little earlier or a little later I wouldn't even have been here and you wouldn't have it, you wouldn't even have this information. Right there are the first signs of Belut Lakiput people. These were teenagers on motorcycles. And here's their village. This is the Belut Lakiput village right here. There's not that many, there's less than a thousand in this people group. So let's check out their village.
say so wave say hello hello awesome This is Fort Hose. It sits overlooking the Barm River. And uh, this famous landmark was established in 1901. This place was instrumental at bringing together all of the warring tribes in order to sign a peace treaty. So it was instrumental in bringing the tribes together and to stop the warring between each other. At the same time, headhunting became illegal and the practice was ended. And this was instrumental in ending not only the wars, but the headhunting. So Fort Hose, 1901. Well, good morning from Miri, Malaysia. It's the day after Chinese New Year. And it's a beautiful day, a little bit hot, but it's a good day. I've got some sad news for you. My ride here in Malaysia is over. As you can see here, my riding clothes are in tatters. My protective gear has been compromised by the crash I had a few days ago. The outer layers burn through here. The inner layers burn through. My base layer burned through. And I don't feel like I can ride confidently with gear that has been compromised like this. If I have another off, God forbid, it, it would be bad. In addition to that, my gloves are in tatters as well and effectively useless. So, I um, made the decision to discontinue the ride here in Malaysia. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly up to Thailand and wait for an order to come from the United States of the protective gear, the correct protective gear that I need in order to ride safely and confidently. Another reason why I feel like it's best to call this trip off is, you know, I've got a broken back rack here and I can't get it fixed right now because it's Chinese New Year and everybody's off. And if I had a problem or I fell off, this could be very, very, very dangerous um, for me, you know, if I fell off, it could impale me. You know, one of the things I, I love to do is I love to go to these outlying communities, to the indigenous tribes of the area, to do what it takes to get there. And, and when I get there, I love eating the food, talking to the people, experiencing the culture, the smells, the taste, the sounds. It's all so amazing but it's rough and I put a lot of pressure on my equipment and I just don't feel like my equipment here, the motorcycle, of course, and my riding clothes, it's not up to par. So I think it's best here to call this trip off. Now I'm having a friend of a friend come here and transport this motorcycle back uh, to Kota Kinabalu, to Scooter Monkey where I rented it. And um, this motorcycle I think is good for running around town and for little day trips but for serious adventures off-road with 70 pounds of gear on it the bike isn't ready for it and so that's just something I had to come to grips with today it's a little bittersweet having to leave this beautiful nation 
with these beautiful people here. Uh, I have to say the Malaysian people are some of the kindest, sweetest, well-rounded people that I've met. They've been very, very helpful. So I'm sorry I have to say goodbye early. Maybe what I'll have to do is plan another trip back here with my own equipment or if I can find better equipment. Yeah, it's a little different. Well, I said so long to my Kawasaki 250cc KLX and uh, Fred. The gentleman who's transporting my bike back to KK, he's taken two days to do what I was attempting to do in one day. So, anyway, this ends my journey here in Malaysia. And tomorrow I head to Thailand.